everyone. Welcome to my tutorial on dodge and burn. There are two ways that you can do dodge and burn in your images, which I'll take you through. But first, I'm just going to explain a little bit about what it is. So we tend to do dodge and burn as sort of one of the last steps in your photography. So once everything's cleaned up, you feel like it's in a good place, but you just want to add that little bit of extra pop. You want to bring things out of the background. We can use dodge and burn to sort of lift um, lighter areas and um, sort of bring down darker areas. So dodge is the, you know, the art of making things lighter. Um, so using the dodge tool, we can play with highlights, midtones and shadows. Um, but typically we are using dodge to, to, you know, to really highlight those highlights, which I know I've just repeated, but there we go. Um, and the burn tool is what you would use to darken areas of your image. Again, you can darken highlights, shadows or midtones, but typically you will sort of push the shadows um, that little bit darker to sort of create that contrast and that pop. So the first thing we're going to look at is the physical dodge and burn tool, which is normally on your panel um, on the left hand side if you're in Essentials Classic in Photoshop. Um, I've got burn select at the moment, uh, which is sort of little hand tool. Um, and if I just go um, to the range and select shadows, I'm just going to whack it up um, just so you can see exactly what I'm on about. Um, and it is important to know that for the dodge um, burn physical tool, you need to have a layer selected, um, like a physical uh, image layer rather than an adjustment layer, otherwise it won't work. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to paint onto this um, this image directly. And as you can see, if you're going to go full whack, you can really just darken the shadows. It does sort of um, enhance the saturation, and bring out the colour a bit more. You wouldn't do it like this. This is just an example. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the beginning on that one. You know, I would advise that if you're using the dodge and burn tool to create a copy of the layer that you're working on, um, just because it's not reversible. So that's one of the cons to using the dodge and burn tool is because it's not reversible unless you've got sort of a, a snapshot history um, to go back to. Um, the other method I'm going to show you is reversible. It is adjustable and it's really handy. Um, so yeah, the dodge tool, if I just show you quickly, um, if I whack this up, uh, on the highlights to the exposure of 70. Again, you wouldn't do this. If I just start to paint over this, it goes a bit wild, but it sort of, you know, brightens the colours. It makes everything go a bit wild. So again, I'm just going to go back to the beginning on that. The way I'd advise you use Dodge and Burn um, is to um, sort of only use an exposure of 1% to 2%, um, and then you can start to sort of paint over the areas, um, use with caution, use with intuition, don't overdo it. There's nothing worse than an over dodged or burned image. Um, so yeah, I would use it sparingly. Um, as I said, the nice thing about this is, is that you can, um, you know, with using the dodge tool, I could lift the shadows if they were too dark. It doesn't always work the best, um, but, as you can see here, it just starts to, if I whack this up again, um, it just starts to lift those shadows. It's looking awful, but I'm just trying to over-dramatise it so you understand what the tools do. Um, so yeah, just to summarise, um, if you're using the dodge and burn tool, probably only 1% to 2% exposure, use it sparingly um, and make sure you're not overdoing it. Always duplicate your layer and make sure that you've got sort of a, a saved version of the previous uh, image before you dodge and burn because it's not reversible. So with the second way you can dodge and burn, um, I do it by using a curves adjustment layer. So uh, this is the finished image. Um, if I just quickly click on and off these two layers here, as you can see on the turmeric and the watermelon and other little bits, um, this is the dodge layer. It just sort of pulls out those highlights um, and the burn. It just kind of lowers down um, the tone of the shadows and sort of uh, makes it a little bit more contrasty. 
I still wanted to keep this sort of natural look I didn't want it to have too much dark in the shadows because it's a really bright and fresh image um but again that's just completely down to you and, and what the style of work is and and the you know the tone of your brand that you're working on um with the curve adjustment layers what's really cool about it is obviously if you don't want it anymore you can just unclick it it doesn't have to be there it's not permanent and if you feel like your shadows aren't dark enough you can always go back into sort of like this histogram area and you can pull the shadows back down. Like if I lift that all the way up, which looks terrible, it would take it the other way. But you can still play with those, um, the burn and dodge um, layers. And you can, you know, you can really see there where I've, you know, made those, um, those dodge adjustments. Um, so, yeah, it is playable after you've um after you've sort of painted in your areas but i'm just going to show you how to set up a burn and dodge uh, adjustment layer so i'm just going to unclick those because that's how it's already done um so what we're going to do is go to this little um black and white circle at the bottom the adjustment layers click on that and go to curves uh, I'm just going to name this one burn. So I'm going to play with the shadows in the image um, and I'm going to probably really over dramatize it and pull this all the way down. As you can see, it darkens the whole image. Doesn't look that nice, um, but I'm just going to use this as a starting point. I'm then going to click control on my keyboard and also click on this little white layer here. Um, and then we want to delete um, that layer. So with that selected, I'm going to toggle between the two black and white paint swatches. If it's not set to black and white, you can always click this little button here. Um, and I'm just going to click delete on this layer because that will then remove everything. We can then um, select the paintbrush tool. Um, and for this, I normally have an opacity of 100%, but then a flow of 1%. Um, this just helps you to be able to build that layer up. So when you're painting back in the shadows, um, you can you can really layer it up and sort of go as deep or as punchy, but it doesn't um, make it go too crazy. For example, if I put the, the flow right up to 100%, you can see that that will paint it in quite dark, but it's harder to control. Um, so yeah, I would recommend that you stick to about 1% in the flow. You could also do it where your flow is about 35% and your opacity is lower. Um, you can have a play, you can get different sort of um, looks and feels from doing things like that. But this way is just sort of the safest way to get nice balanced um, shadows or highlights out of your dodge and burn tools without going too crazy. Um, again, I'm going to show you how to set up the dodge version. So back in the, the layers panel, this little white and black circle, click on curves. I'm going to rename this dodge. And I'm going to lift the upper right hand corner of the histogram and pull that up. As you can see, that's very bright. Um, and I'm just going to uh, click control on my keyboard, click the, the layer, the layer mask, and then I'm just going to delete it out again. Um, just, you know, you can toggle between these black and white um, swatches. And then I'm just going to go back to my brush tool or be on the keyboard and I'm just going to paint in some more detail on these highlights. Um, you can always whack up the, the flow just to check that it's working, which it is. Um, and yeah, it's all just about playing and getting the right balance. There isn't really a right or wrong answer to dodge and burn, but it is sort of a rule of thumb just to not go too crazy you're only using it to enhance you're not using it to sort of fix mistakes um that you've had during shooting or anything like that so um so yeah that is the two uh two ways of dodge and burn that i would recommend um 
using the tool that's ready built into Photoshop on the panel, which isn't adjustable and you do have to be careful with it. Or you can use the dodge and burn through a curves layer and sort of paint back in your details. So I hope that helps somewhat. I hope um, that was useful. And if you have any questions, as usual, let me know and I'll try and get back to you and help you out. Oh, 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 oh,